proving that a set is a vector space can be pretty tedious since you have to check eight different properties, but we should probably see it done at least once. One of the examples in a previous video was that the functions from some set D to the real numbers form a vector space. Let's prove this. We've got to, we defined addition and scalar multiplication, and they are both closed. So we have the closure properties that leaves that list of eight properties that addition and scalar multiplication have to satisfy. We're going to use the same trick over and over in this proof. Two functions are equal if and only if their outputs are equal for every input in the domain. So here, f and g are functions f of x and g of x are real numbers. These are the outputs we get from the input x. So two functions are equal. If this real number equals this real number for every input x. Let's see how this is applied to commutativity. We want f plus g to equal g plus f. This is true if and only if f plus g applied to x equals g plus f applied to x for all x in the domain. By the way, we defined function addition. This is true if and only if f of x plus g of x equals g of x plus f of x for all x in the domain. And this is simply true because f of x and g of x are real numbers. And real addition is commutative. This real number plus this real number equals this real number plus this real number. Order doesn't matter when you're adding real numbers. And most of the arguments are identical. So I'm not going to show all of them in depth. Like the next thing we want is that addition is 
is associative. And the argument is the same. We go from a statement about functions to a statement about real numbers, albeit an infinite number of real numbers, a statement about every real number in D. But then this statement about real numbers is just trivially true. It is a true statement that adding three real numbers is associative and that it doesn't matter where you put the parentheses. So now let's just go through this list. We need a zero vector. The constant function f of x equals zero will serve that role. Function should have additive inverses. Well, they do. If we have a function f, we can define a negative f in the natural way. For example, if you have the sine function, then negative f is the negative sine function. Five and six are proven in the same way that we proved commutivity and associativity. So come to think of that, our seven and eight. For five, six, seven, and eight, you just take the statement about functions, and turn it into a statement about real numbers. Because real numbers have all of these properties. Real multiplication distributes over addition. Real multiplication distributes over addition. Real multiplication is associative. Real multiplication by one doesn't change anything. So I kind of, I know, went through this a little fast. Um, there are the details in the notes if, you're, if any of this is unclear. But I didn't want this to be, I mean, this could have been the most boring 20 minute video imaginable. I wanted to try to avoid that. So I hope I struck an acceptable compromise between showing the arguments and not spending forever on this.